Hi, I'm Daisha Seifer, and welcome to my Statistics for Nursing Research YouTube channel. This video is assisting you in determining the normality of a distribution using, using examples from the third and fourth editions of the textbook Statistics for Nursing Research. Now, most parametric statistics do require that the dependent variable and sometimes independent variables be normally distributed. If that distribution is not normally distributed, then the researcher does have choices. You can transform the data, or you can compute an alternative statistic called a non-parametric statistic. There are three general steps to determine the normality of a distribution. Uh, number one, examine the frequency distribution, observe the shape. Number two, compute the skewness and kurtosis statistics. You are looking for values that are larger in magnitude than 1.0 or negative 1.0. A negative value would indicate a, a skewed distribution in the negative direction. A positive value would indicate a skewed distribution in the positive direction. Then compute a test of normality, such as a Shapiro-Wilk test for smaller samples or a Kolmogorov morgorov smirnov test for samples that are 1,000, 2,000 or more. Here is an example from the fourth edition of the Grove & Cipher workbook. We have three variables selected from a much larger data set of, of students who discontinued their nursing program. We have the age that they were when they enrolled in the program. Then we have them rate their le levels of stress and hopefulness on a five-point Likert scale at the point of discontinuation. So we're going to do all three of those steps in determining normality all at once using SPSS. We'll go to the Analyze menu, Descriptive Statistics, and Frequencies. We'll move over all three of these continuous variables to the right, click on Statistics and Skewness and Kurtosis. And then let's ask for that histogram for each one, continue and OK. And then that will populate a different window, the output uh, file. But we're going to add one more thing, that test of normality. So we'll go back into descriptive statistics, but this time we'll choose explore and move over those three variables over to the right and choose plots and normality plots with tests, continue and OK. Now let, let's look at what we have. The first thing that we see are the skewness and kurtosis values here. So we have for age at enrollment, a skewness statistic of over 1.0, 1.348. We have a kurtosis value of over one, meaning uh, that it is significantly curvier than norm or higher uh, than a the shape of a normal bell curve. And then we have the skewness statistic for stress is negative, but it's not in magnitude, it's not greater than 1.0, but it does indicate a negatively skewed distribution. The kurtosis is also negative, but not over a magnitude, an absolute value of 1.0. And then for hopefulness, we have a skewness statistic of an absolute zero. There is absolutely no skewness here, meaning the distribution is perfectly symmetrical. And here we have a very low value of kurtosis. Let's look at those frequency distributions. Here is age. And for age, sure enough, the positive and high skewness statistic does make sense here. This is clearly a positively skewed distribution. Stress is a negatively skewed distribution. And then this is what our hopefulness variable looks like. As you can see, it is perfectly symmetrical. And then finally, I'm going to use my index feature on the left side of my screen to go straight to the tests of normality table. 
And we're going to be looking at the Shapiro Wilk area here because this is a small sample of only 20 observations. And for age at enrollment, the p-value for the Shapiro-Wilk test is 0 0.011. That is less than 0 0.05. And that means that the shape of age in terms of its distribution significantly deviates from the shape of a bell curve. And therefore, we can say the distribution significantly deviates from normality. Now let's go to stress. Stress. The p-value for the Shapiro-Wilk is 0 0.03, also less than an alpha of 0 0.05. So we would say also that stress significantly deviates from a normal distribution. Finally, hopefulness. Hopefulness is the p-value for hope, hopefulness is 0.126. Now, 0.126 is greater than an alpha of 0 0.05, indicating that uh, hopefulness is, does not significantly differ from the shape of a normal distribution. So we'll go back here. And what do we know? We know that age is positively skewed. Stress is negatively skewed. And hopefulness is normally distributed. So for age and stress, if you were planning to submit those variables to a parametric statistic, and the statistic requires the distribution to be normal, approximately normal, you will either need to transform the distribution to approximate normality, or you will need to compute a non-parametric statistic instead. For hopefulness, you can, you can proceed to your parametric statistic if the other assumptions are met, and um, you because we're assuming that that is a normally distributed variable. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to Statistics for Nursing Research on YouTube.